In a football mad country called Iraq, the young professionals from the Zura club are taking a body count. The squad is together for the first time since the war. The coaching staff are thanking God that the team actually survived. For these young men, the end of the regime is the best sporting news in decades. The nation might be free from Saddam Hussein, but better still, Iraqi football is also free from its chief administrator, Uday, oldest son of Saddam. If, uh, if the team is, uh, is uh, lose, he put it, uh, the team in the jail or he cut uh, hair. Uh, Sometimes he slapped some player. That's what he do. So Uday would slap the player? Not Uday, but uh, the bodyguard. Leith Hussain won 100 international games for his country over 16 years. Sporadic poor form, punishment and jail in 1986, 88, 89, 98 and 2000. What effect did that have on your performance? Did you play differently next week? Sure, sure. I play very well. Uday Saddam Hussein was a media baron, businessman and all-round thug under his father's regime. And unfortunately for Iraqi sport, a football fanatic. When the Americans started bombing, this was one of the first places they hit. The Iraqi Olympic Committee was a sham linked to the international organisation. It was from here Uday controlled all Olympic sports and football as well. Hisham Mohammed is one of Iraq's most prolific strikers. And when he was offered a contract to play in the Gulf states, Uday only let him go on the condition he'd get a 40% cut of his salary. But Hisham still had to make himself available for Iraq for those dreaded internationals. This was where Hisham ended up after a bad game, Radwaniya Prison. After losing to Japan at the Asian Championships two years ago, he and the rest of the team spent 16 days here. It was Uday's private jail for poor performing athletes, a place where their heads would be shaved, where athletes would suffer water torture and have to undergo backbreaking training for 12 hours a day. Assalamu alaikum. Uday's interest extended beyond football when it came to the Olympic Games. Meza Matrud is Iraq's fastest woman over 10,000 metres. At the Sydney Olympics, she was one of only four athletes from Iraq. So this is Sydney? Yeah, this is Sydney. A group of Iraqi Australians raised money and were planning to give each of the struggling athletes $6,000. Instead, it went straight back to Baghdad. <laughs> Maisa Matrud is so disillusioned with sport, she's retired from running and taken the veil. Uday reveled in the humiliation of all of his sporting stars, even the greatest. Ahmed Radi is perhaps Iraq's best ever footballer, national team captain for seven years and World Cup goal scorer in 1986. His every public appearance warrants crowd control. But even the best can put in a poor game. Ahmed Radi's career stats include three jailings and two shavings. Always when we lose, maybe we are in the other country, we have a, a game or championship. When we lose this game, we are uh, always speaking about uh, how they punished us when we returned to Baghdad. When Ahmed Radi won a $60,000 contract to play in Qatar, Uday wanted every cent before he'd allow his star player to leave the country. Instead, Ahmed handed over $10,000 and his $50,000 car. In the shattered city, a kick in the park is about all these men and boys have left to do. Iraq's professional footballers were recruited from these suburbs. They played for Iraq and endured punishment from Uday because football was the only opportunity they ever had. I feel it's very good, the future, for me and for all the players. 
maybe go play outside. All the players go uh, to make contract with uh, any country. Leith's mentor too is talking of a new future for football in Iraq. The old regime did not know about sport. Ahmed Radi told his players they didn't really care.